Hey everyone, and welcome back to Nomi Factory, episode 2 here, and you're joining me at a tetrahedrite vein. I've been doing a bit of crafting between the episodes, and I'm finding that we're out of copper and iron. And this massive tetrahedrite vein actually gives us three different resources. We get copper, iron, and gold from this thing. So the plan for today is to continue to expand out our LV machines, which we built last episode. And if we look at our quest here, we are fairly close to DML, which I would also like to get to, along with picking up our very first blast furnace. But first of all, I think we're going to extend out this platform. We have a chunk aligned base and we're going to continue with that theme, since the Greg Tech multi blocks like to be within their own chunks. And to help us with this, we're going to make the building gadget. Wait, no we're not, that's the wrong one. <laughs> we need the copy paste gadget, which we all oh, need emeralds for this, oh no. Well, fortunately we can just buy emeralds. That was a close call there, we, we kind of got saved. <laughs> I did not account for that at all. Yeah, the copy-paste gadget. Yeah, this tool allows us just to copy two sections or two corners of each of these sections. And we can very easily paste in an extra chunk. And we have a new part of our base to work with. Easy. Oh, and an excellent feature of Nomi is the chisels have infinite durability. Look at that. Alright, so to start us off today, we're going to batch craft a whole lot of these LV components. We've got 18 electric motors here, along with enough for, I think, 5 LV pumps, which should also be a quest. And we're going to use the first of these pumps to make a fluid extractor fluid solidifier combination. We are still missing a couple of pistons for this, we may as well make two. There's the fluid extractor. And the quest. And the solidifier here, we're just missing two circuits, of which we have 13 left. We'll definitely have to make some more of these this episode. There's the solidifier. No quest for this. Oh, we're missing a prerequisite first. Apparently we need molds for this thing, that's right. The molds we can make just with some steel plates. The quest calls for a block mold, a gear mold, and also a rotor mold. Alright, we got these guys set up like the rest of the machines for buffers for input and output. Although because this one takes fluid, we can just automatically send it from the fluid extractor. So we don't need a crate on top of this, and this also has got our moulds in the bottom. But I think this concludes the basic LV machines that we're going to want at this moment. It's time to start looking into some DML. DML is a very, very powerful mod which can allow us to generate resources from nothing basically. We can craft these various data models and run them through simulation chambers which can give us a chance at some pristines, and then we can loot fabricate those into various materials. This can give us, I mean, almost every basic resource in the game, including mob loot as well. Although, to make any of these machines, we do need a fair chunk of dark steel. To make dark steel, we need a lot of obsidian, which we, I think, alloy smelt with iron. And at least at this stage of the game, I think just mining obsidian is the best way forward. Yeah, so I picked up just over two stacks of obsidian, which should be enough to get us started. Oh, wait a sec. Was this not the recipe? Oh, it's with steel, not iron. I don't think we have any spare steel, do we? No, we're gonna have to make up a lot more. Alright, we got some steel going here in the alloy smelter. Wait, was that my... How did the wrench end up in there? <laughs> if we look at some of the other things we need for the simulation chambers, it does take a fair amount of circuits, actually. As well as this pulsating mesh, which we can get from coal dust, easy, and string, which is actually not so easy for us at this stage of the game. We don't have too much string at the moment, uh, although we do have some wool we can use. I think I'm going to have to go out and shear some sheep before it's all said and done. But once we have DML, we can get the spider model, I believe, and that will give us string. We can use the macerator to turn the wool into string very easily, and then alloy smelt all of this with coal dust. And a little bit of crafting later, we can make another 44 primitive circuits. I don't want to go too crazy with these things, since we do want the cheaper circuit recipes. But I think we are going to be required to make the first tier 2 circuit, which we will need as part of DML as well. And also our gate into MV. While we wait on some of the machines, I think we do something about this farm, and eliminate the fact that we are spewing sugar canes out onto the floor. We need a better item collection solution. And for that, we're going to need the autoclave. So since the autoclave also takes fluids, I think we're going to shuffle over our polarizer. Wait, did we? Yeah, we got that back. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I just assumed we could break out the pickaxe, and that turns out to be true, which is nice. Yeah, the autoclave we're going to put next to the fluid extractor, and the polarizer we'll put here. And so the reason we need the autoclave is to make a pulsating crystal. We need to fluid extract some pulsating iron, first of all, and then combine that with a diamond. And we get our pulsating crystal. Nice. And this we just craft with a chest and some iron. And we can make our vacuum chest. What is the range on this thing? Only six blocks, huh? 
You know what, I think I'm going to move this setup out the front here. Alright, that's definitely looking a bit neater now. We will still need the void upgrade though for this. And do we need conduit speed upgrades? It looks like probably the answer is yes. Yeah, as far as I know, this thing doesn't auto-output, so we need a conduit on the side. It looks like it's not able to keep up though, so you know what, I think for now, we just reduce the speed of the farm. We don't need this much sugarcane at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's getting voided anyway, so we'll fix it when we, whenever we need it. I think we'll be using this later on for biomass. Now that we have a few more machines running and we're going to be having the blast furnace and DML also consuming power, I think that we give these things a small upgrade. So I'd like to look into these hardened upgrade kits, which is going to take invar and electrical steel. Invar is also something that we need for heat proofs, which is used in the blast furnace. And electrical steel we can make, I forget how we make this, silicon and steel. How do we get silicon? Is it just a, like clay electrolysis? I think it might be at this stage of the game. Or pretty much every stage of the game actually is just clay electrolysis. Let's try to get some of the invar going at least. We have a big Q in our alloy smelter which probably means it's time for a second one. And this is also all the iron we have left as well to our name. I don't think two stacks is going to be enough for the blast furnace and for the upgrades that we want either. Yeah, time for another mining trip I think. Before we go though, we are going to use the small amount of invar we already have to upgrade our flux capacitors. This takes it from a 10 million capacity to a 40 million capacity, and I have a feeling we're going to be power negative when we start running the blast furnace at first. So it's going to be good to build up a bigger power buffer before that happens, especially considering our power is basically free for us right now. So yeah, we got machines queued, time for mining. Alright, so I picked up an, uh, another assortment of ores, some of which are still smelting here. And we also now have our electrolyzer, which is currently electrolyzing clay dust. Clay dust, of course, we get from the macerator. I think there's still some left in here. I'm going to have to go and collect some more clay. So that allowed us to get some of the electrical steel that we'll need. And I think some of the invar gears have finished out of the fluid solidifier. We need some invar plates. I've made quite a bit extra since, we'll, again, we'll need these for heat proofs for the blast furnace. And this allows us to pick up the hardened upgrade kits. Actually, we'll need three, won't we? Yeah, we have three dynamos. That would... <laughs> It would help if we made three. So yeah, as the quest states, this increases our power generation and fuel burn rate by 150%. However, we also have extra space for augments, so we're going to put more fuel catalyzers in this. Although I don't believe that these turbines benefit from the catalyzers. I don't think this actually does anything, since these only take steam, which is being produced by the boiler. Oh, and it's really, really nice that the rotors, or no, the gears in this only take four ingots. Unlike in GTNH, where it's like 4.1, something like that, so you're always left with that tiny amount. <laughs> Oh, that's so frustrating. So you have to do like 17, I think it is the ratio at a time. Anyways, here we got all the quality of life. Awesome, I think it's time that we start getting into some DML. We have the circuits crafted. Our dark steel should be finished by now. At least a stack of it, which is fine for, for the time being. We'll have to make up some of this uh, pulsating mesh, is it? Yeah, pulsating mesh. This has changed a little bit since the last time I played, actually. I don't remember if the recipe is the same, but it's definitely a different texture, that's for sure. Anyways, I made some spare LV machine hulls, we'll need our circuits, and some dark steel plates, which allows us to craft a dark steel machine hull, and also pick up our first simulation chamber. Nice, Questbook gives us the manual, and actually one thing I didn't actually look into before I started this is since we're playing on peaceful, do we need to level up the data models? Since you know, normally it comes at tier 0, which means you have to kill a few of the mobs that you want to farm first. I don't know how that's going to work, but... <laughs> Either way, we're going to need some blank data models, which is going to take some more electrical steel, a tier 1 circuit, and some fine gold wire. That's that's fairly easy. Oh yeah, it looks like the data model does just run automatically, or straight after being crafted. That might have just been a feature of Nomi though, I don't remember the config settings exactly. But we are getting a chance at some overworldly and matter, which I remember actually can give us experience, which means we can repair the hammer. That, was get that thing was getting very, very expensive to repair. But yeah, this also does take the polymer clay to run, as basically a fuel source every iteration. And this comes from our clay and pulsating dust. To automate pulsating dust, we need ender pearls. Actually, this is the EV recipe, right? Yeah, so we need to do this via resonant cloth rates and to get the cloth rates we need molten ender which means we need to farm ender pearls and the best way of doing that is with dml on pristine enderman matter however for this we do need some extra terrestrial matter which until we have the enderman model means we have to get via hellish matter and hellish matter we can get from overworlding matter with nether rack well how do we get nether rack we are going to get nether rack with the use of a chemical reactor i believe this is our first chemical reactor so we're going to be using this recipe here with dust blocks and lava. To get dust, we have to macerate sand. And to make the lava a bit easier to transport, since we can't automate it just yet. Wait, that's a steel hull. How do we make the drum? <laughs> that's a steel chest. 
Oh, it's with a bucket. We're going to make the steel drum. This thing, I believe, will just hold its fluid whenever we pick it up. Let's test that theory. Yes, contains a bucket of lava. All right. Oh man, this holds 64 buckets. I don't know if we need 64 buckets right now. Let's go for 16. And there's no burning your hands here, unlike GTNH. All right, so this gives us our nether rack. We can grab the overworldian matter and... Oh, that's the blast furnace recipe. <laughs> yeah, I have been prepping some of the stuff for the electric blast furnace. How much of this matter do we need? I think it's eight, right? It's seven plus a blaze powder, all right. And blaze powder is just a gunpowder plus a hellish matter. And with this, we can grab the blaze data model. Actually, we probably didn't need to do that, right? We could have just crafted some extra terrestrial with ender pearls. Yeah, and then jump straight to the enderman. Oh, this way. <laughs> this way, we're gonna have to make another blank data model, but I mean, it's all right, we need this anyway. Yeah, we will actually run the blaze data model so that we can get the hellish matter. We actually need quite a bit of this to get enough of the extra terrestrial. So in the meantime, I think it's blast furnace time. Just one for now, since we don't have the power for more. We'll also need two energy input hatches to make this MV. Also, look at this for a, for a recipe. <laughs> I'm so shocked at how cheap this is. One LV machine hull and a tin cable for, for an energy input hatch. That is nuts. I Also, when I was mining, I did pick up some more nickel so that we could make some cooper nickel, which of course is what our first coils is going to be made out of. Not even any silicon dioxide or mica required for this either. We just need 2x cooper nickel wire and a wrench in the middle. And we got our cooper nickel coil blocks. We'll need our heat proof machine casings. An input bus and an output bus. An input and an output hatch. Look how cheap this is. <laughs> blast furnace fun. Nice. The first of many blast furnaces constructed, I think. Yeah, looks like we have a valid multi-block. Let's test out some of our aluminium dust, which we should be getting out of clay electrolysis. Ah, yeah, I knew this would happen. The machine needs more energy, that's right. So the way that energy works in CE, I had to do some reading on this again, actually, but it is different from GTNH. So the way that amperage works is it's not actually summed across the whole wire, meaning that you can just basically infinitely spam these CEFs as long as they are of the same voltage output as the wire you're outputting to. And I believe that's what we done last run, but I think this time we're going to go for the 16x CEF. Now, we do have to be careful with this. If we plug this in here, all the wire burns. So we're going to have to upgrade all of the conductive iron wire to at least 16x to be able to handle the amount of amperage output that the CEF can give. There goes the pickaxe. And just to save on wire, I think we'll move the CEF a bit closer in, around here. There, so we should be giving this thing enough power now. Connect up some extra conduit to these things. Oh, this thing is blinking like crazy. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I don't think we're going to be producing enough power, but at least with our power buffer here, which in fact we may as well upgrade. Let's make another 16 of these capacitors, which should all fit inside this new CEF. I don't know how worthwhile that is, but I mean, they're cheap anyway. They're not going to run unless these things are off. However, this should have finished. I don't think this voids it actually if it runs out of power. Nope, we have our first aluminium ingot here. Look at this. Perfection. Okay, let's smelt it all. We got, what, just over two stacks here? Oh, and that's also something else I wanted to test. The input bosses do automatically pull from adjacent inventories. That is an awesome feature of CE. Oh, and it's only 20 seconds as well. 20 seconds for ingot. Oh, we're spoiled here. <laughs>so I've been doing a bit of preparations for us to progress and I think the very last material well I don't want to say the very last <laughs> one of the other things we need to progress here is quite a lot of bauxite I'm gonna mine out this whole vein we found this actually last episode and I had this marked here conveniently this does also give us aluminium our main renewable source of aluminium will always be clay electrolysis but this is gonna be a nice boost alongside the bauxite that we have to pick up for gallium actually all right so I didn't grab it all but I know for a fact we're not gonna need it all right now so the way we want to process this boxite is first of all macerating it. And I checked the recipe out here, we get actually a 100% chance at gallium. So we macerate once for crushed, 
then crush it again in the pulverizer for impure, and then centrifuge for what looks like a 100% chance at 3 tiny piles of gallium. The only thing is, this is quite a slow process at LV, we may have to look at getting another macerator. Oh yeah, and I did pick up on a, se a second alloy smelter, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. But yeah, we'll need the gallium for the tier 2 circuits, as we do need some MV machines in order to fully automate this pulsating polymer clay, which is going to be the strategy moving forward here. Basically, we're going to be using DML to further upgrade our power, as well as being able to generate the rest of the resources that we need. I'll explain a little bit later on, but uh, yeah, first of all, using some of the aluminium that's now finished smelting here in the blast furnace, along with some energetic alloy actually, which we'll get back to, we can make some blocks of aluminium, and this unlocks the next tier of upgrade kit. We'll eventually make three. I did account for this. The, <laughs> the other gears are still crafting. There's the quest for that as well. So this will take us from 240 RF per tick each up to 400 RF per tick each. So that effectively means we're giving this thing 800 RF. Although if I remember correctly, this is only a maximum of 512. Yeah, so we're going to be bottlenecked by the conduit itself. But yeah, we did craft the Enderman data model, which has been running a little while. Unfortunately, we do only have one pristine, but the chances of this do increase the, the higher tier your data model is. So obviously with the pristine, we want to throw this through the loot fabricator to give us ender pearls. To make the loot fabricator though, we need another dark steel machine hull, some primitive circuits. These are the tier two circuits and also this energetic alloy. And that's the reason we now have this mixer here. So we mixed up some energetic blends, some glowstone and redstone, and you combine this with gold in the blast furnace and this gives us energetic alloy. So yeah, for the loot fab, I think we're just missing these tier 2 circuits here, which takes four of the LVs, four of the primitives, just some raw iron, some red alloy, and diodes, which is where the gallium comes into play here. Mm, only 30 circuits left though, I know for a fact this isn't going to be enough for us to fully automate PPC. So yeah, a little bit of crafting, we can batch up another, what is this, 30 more primitive circuits? 29 primitive circuits, we're just waiting on some more red alloy cable for this. Oh my goodness, look at the gallium. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy how much we get out of this. That's amazing. You know, to progress though, we're going to need this quest for the gallium before the circuits. The quest wants us to get it through the sphalerite ore, which I think is another option. Although we haven't found any sphalerite yet. I think it spawns along with zinc, which we will need for filters here soon. But just so that we can unlock the quest, we're going to buy some sphalerite. I guess that we can smelt this into zinc anyway. But yeah, there's the rest of the red alloy cable for the circuits. That's 54 in total. That should be enough. Combined with the, well, 30 that we had. And we have enough for four stacks of diodes. In fact, we could probably make more of these, but I don't want to go too overkill with these. And with this, we can make our first primitive processors. Sure, we'll do five. We don't have that much raw iron left. Pick up the sphalerite dust for the quest. And this should be two quests, actually. The first tier two circuits. And putting all of this together, we can make our very first loot fabricator. Awesome. This I'm a bit reluctant to put on the power line since it will steal all the power. I think this has a pretty large internal buffer. Alright, so now I think we've got the ability to make all the machines that we need for this PPC. And the machine list is going to be as follows. Two nuclear craft cobblestone generators. An LV chemical reactor. Five LV macerators. An LV electrolyzer. Another LV fluid extractor. I think just the one LV electric furnace an LV alloy smelter, some endervoirs for water production, and this is also where we need our first MV machine, the chemical reactor. The MV machine hull should be a quest, so we'll need some of the motors at MV tier, this time taking aluminium and copper rather than tin and iron, and we got our MV chemical reactor. Alright, so here comes the fun part, putting all of this together. We are going to start with the sand automation, I think, so we'll start with the cobblestone generator, which is going to go into three separate macerators. These will all point into each other. So first one is cobblestone to gravel, then gravel into sand, and then sand into dust, which then goes through a chemical reactor with water, which will give us clay. Endervoir will go underneath, I think. Nice, so that is automated clay production. So the next step for the clay is to alloy smelt this with pulsating dust. So that's basically the first part of this line done. Let's next make this pulsating dust. This is going to start in a very similar way. Another cobblestone generator into two macerators. Oh wait, can we not place this here? I think I think these things are given the given cobblestone to each other. <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. Okay, I think we're gonna have to move this to the top then, and of course give it a cable for power. So again, we got cobblestone to gravel, gravel to sand. And instead of a third macerator, this time it's going to be an electric furnace. And this will be sand to glass. We are then going to electrolyze the glass. 
which will give us quartz, and then this has to go through a chemical reactor at MV, along with our molten ender. So to power the MV one, we need a transformer. We need to be very careful with these things. <laughs> Although in CE, I think the power only comes out of the front face and power can only be inserted in the back, which is going to make this a bit bulky, actually. Mm, yeah, I don't think there's any re really any way around this. That is the wrong way. We're going to have to come out a block like this. I don't think we get power on the top. Yeah. Nah, there must be a, there must be another way. Let me find this. Aha, yeah, I knew it. That's looking a bit better, I think. We are, however, missing one electric furnace. Just a LV is fine. This we are going to place here. And we take advantage of the fact that this can only output in one side. Alright, so we're up to the electrolyzer. This goes via conduit into the chemical reactor as quartz. The ender pearls are going to come from DML system, probably from this side somewhere, and be put in this drawer. I think we'll need a conveyor to pull them into the machine, but that's going to be fluid extracted, automatically sent to the chemical reactor, which gives us resonant clathrates. And from here we'll extract on, I guess, purple, which will then go into the electric furnace. So the top side we want purple insert. That will be smelted into pulsating dust. And do we want to buffer this? I think probably we do, because it's 12 second recipe for pulsating polymer clay. Yeah, it's normally a good idea to build in buffers where you can, so we'll place a drawer above. And then we're going to send this into this alloy smelter here, which is going to output pulsating polymer clay in this drawer. And I wanted this on the right so that we could export it around our base, which is going to be elsewhere. The DML system will be separate to this line of machines. Yeah, so this dust goes along with the clay, which is right here. We can just extend that and conduit up. Oh wait, that's not what we want. Yeah, we need some filters for this, I think. Oh yeah, and let's see if this overfills the alloy smelter. It does, okay. That means we're going to need a limited item filter for this one. Can we make limited item? We need Z-Logic. Uh, I don't know if we can make this yet. Oh, we need a zombie head for this. Oh, and silicon wafers. You know what? This is going to be quite the detour, but it's, it's very necessary. Unless we maybe use a robot arm. But that involves switching up the whole array over there. So we're going to make some silicon bulls, just some silicon dust, and tiny piles of gallium. And this isn't getting enough power now, because of all these machines, I suspect. So we're probably going to need some more CEUs, or CEFs. Let's soft mallet some of these machines for now. We don't need these running at the moment. For the zombie head, fortunately we did start with the zombie data model, which means we do have some pristines. We can plug in our loot fabricator and select the zombie heads. Oh, it's struggling. <laughs> Not enough power here. It's going to make it though, I believe, I believe. Oh, come on, you're almost there. There we go. <laughs> right, let's disconnect this. We are also going to need solarium for this, which we haven't made yet. This is just soul sand and gold. And soul sand we can get from hellish matter. Should have some of that left over. And I mean, we might as well do a full stack of this. Oh, and you know what? The other thing I didn't think about is we need a cut and saw, right? Yeah, we'll need a saw to cut the silicon bulls, which are going to come out of the blast furnace from gallium. And it looks like these in this pack only start at MV, so we're going to have to make one of these things. Oh my goodness, cobalt brass is horrible. But we got our cutting machine. And the silicon bull. I guess we're going to have to borrow this transformer. Yeah, until we set up the MV line. Alright, cut the wafer. Nope, not enough power down that end. We're going to have to do this little GTCE trick. Where we soft mallet it until, <laughs> until it progresses. I think we're almost there. Yep. There's our silicon wafers. And the logic controller. And the first advanced item filler. Which we turn into the limited item filler. Alright, let me fix the filtering on this thing. So what the limited item filler here allows you to do is specify exactly how many items the conduit will let in. So here we can say 60, only 64 clay and only 64 pulsating dust maximum, which means that it will never fill two slots with the one item. I also did switch some things around here. We built in a buffer for pulsating dust, and we also moved the simulation chamber and loot fabricator here. Obviously we're running the enderman data model here for the pristines, and that gets turned into ender pearls, which then gets put in the drawer. And then we have a conveyor module on the side of this. I keep forgetting that in CE you need a screwdriver to access the cover. But yeah, we got a conveyor here set on import which will pull all the ender pearls into the fluid extractor and start this process. I also built in a buffer here for clay. Since the DML system isn't fast enough to keep up yet, we can actually just buffer clay. And all of this clay we can actually just macerate. Oh, this is still doing bauxite. Yeah, we're going to macerate all this clay. Oh, and one cool trick, I don't know if a lot of you guys know about this, but if you hold Control shift and then click an item, it takes all of that item out of the inventory you're looking at. You can also hold shift and then double click 
and that will send all of the same item in. It's all the little things that help speed up the process. Uh, speaking of speaking of time though, we're approaching 13 hours and we have pulsing and polymer clay all made. It's a little bit slower than I would have liked honestly, but we did get our blast furnace today as well, plus our first MV machine. First two MV machines actually. But with all the new machines, we're going to have to upgrade power, which is something that we'll get to next episode. This is going to be the end of this one. And we've actually almost finished the beginning chapter. Almost at Applied Energistics. We're so close, we're so close. But there is a few things we need to do. Anyways guys, thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Nomi Factory.